Good afternoon and welcome to Sports Social. I'm Jay Rana. And I'm Joe McKenzie, coming up on the show today. Stadium or sofa? Would fans rather watch games in their own homes or live at the ground? Well, we explore the new trend. Online group viewings of games, is it for the long term? In other news, I'll be talking to reporter Katie Deerling about the new broadcasting deal within the Women's Super League and how that might affect the championship. Plus, an interview with Liam Peacock on how wakeboarding plans to become an Olympic sport in the near future. Starting off with our top story. With the pandemic coming to an end, many fans across the country are anticipating the return to football stadiums. During lockdown, supporters of various teams have been tuning into watch-alongs on YouTube. Jay went to find out about these watch-alongs, while our colleague Ducker went to speak to fans to see what they prefer. When you walk through a storm, hold your hand. And don't be afraid. Roughly one in every five Premier League fans consume fan channel content, and obviously some channels are more popular than others. World famous Arsenal Fan TV surpassed a whopping one billion video views during this past lockdown, while Coppish, a fairly small Liverpool fan channel, have gained around 2,500 subscribers this year. Though there's differences in numbers, growth and popularity of all fan channels is on a constant rise. Callum Sanderson from Team Coppish describes the influence of fan channels and watch-alongs. Fan channels, I think, are the strongest they've ever been. And I think the lockdown has, has really pushed that narrative as well. I think a lot of people now are starting up fan channels. Watch-alongs is almost like being a fly on the wall with one of your favourite content creators. It's such an in-depth look at what we go through as fans during 90 minutes. So... I think watch-alongs are the future, if I'm going to be honest. Not all fans have access to Sky or BT, and this is a major reason they turn to fan channels. Although the masses respect views from pundits, many love seeing raw emotion on display. This Instagram post revealed that 68% of 200 people prefer watching a Premier League games preview and review on fan channels rather than BT or Sky Sports. Indeed, it's quite remarkable how fan channels have provided regular enjoyment for fans. But will these thrills remain after fans are back in stadiums? Well, this Twitter poll indicates that the majority will continue to depend on watch-alongs even after a return to stadiums. The honest and friendly vibe created by fan channels reels in a larger audience by the day. So lockdown or not, the future for fan channels and fan channel culture is a promising one. I'm currently outside Carrow Road, the home of Norwich City Football Club. And like all football stadiums in the UK, it hasn't seen full crowds since early 2020, meaning it's been over a year since football fans got to experience a normal match day. I spoke to a number of Norwich City fans to find out what they miss most about going to the football. For me, it's spending time with mates and seeing even just the people who sit around and just having a good time. Everything, to be honest. Uh, I miss going with my mates. Like, it's the social side of it more than, more than anything. Everything. Now, there have been ways that fans have stayed connected and entertained on match days during these unprecedented times in the comfort of their own homes. I spoke to YouTuber and Ipswich vlogger Alex Griffin to find out how he's kept fans connected and entertained during this pandemic. Obviously, lockdown hit last year and the only option for fans was to do watch-alongs because you obviously the games are being played behind closed doors and I think the only solution to it was to do watch-alongs. I mean, people around the world sometimes tune in. Like I, I, the other day when I was streaming the Ipswich game, I had people from Norway, Australia, and it's just mental to think that there's Ipswich fans that far away, you know? But obviously, you say you, you did watch-alongs before the pandemic was even heard of them. But do you think they'll you'll carry on with watch alongs post COVID? I don't intend on carry on or carrying on with watch alongs. But if there's a if there's a massive game, like if there's a really, really big game, then maybe I will. Maybe I will. It's clear to see that watch alongs have been successful and have helped keep fans connected during the pandemic. However, it's yet to see whether watch alongs will carry on once the pandemic is over, because every fan will want that feeling of returning back to football stadiums. Following on from football fan culture, we now move to our next story regarding the Women's Super League. 
which has struck a brand new broadcasting deal, paving the way for more live games on TV, alongside a big boost in revenue for the competition. For more on this, here's Katie Dealing. Over the past couple of weeks, there has been a huge leap in women's football. Sky Sports and BBC Sports have made an outstanding £8 million broadcasting deal with the Women's Super League, meaning that at least 44 of their matches will be shown on live TV. And there has been a huge media outroar since the news was announced. While it is a big development for the WSL, this is not the only league it's affecting. 75% of investments will in fact go into the Super League. However, the remaining 25% will be put into the Championship to help these clubs develop and get their professional status. Teams all throughout the Championship will benefit from this deal. It will help completely close off the gap within the league and ultimately make it an equal competition. This is what London Bees defender had to say. The more money that's invested into the league, the more it can grow, the more teams that can go full time. Because at the moment, the Championship is kind of split. Like half the teams are semi-pro, half of them are professional. So I think if more teams can go professional and then it turns into a fully professional league like the WSL, it'll be massive. But money is not the only aspect. Being able to see live games will inspire so many people and will continue to raise the popularity of women's football. I think this deal now coming with Sky Sports and BBC with women's football and the Super League and the, and the Champions League and all that, them getting the chance to be shown more on live television will give younger fans and people with children to watch them and grow the game of women's football and understand it more and for it to hopefully get to the level near men's. This will boost the popularity and enjoyment of watching women's football as it will be easily accessible and it will create more role models for children whose dream is to become a professional athlete. And I think the more games we can get out there and can be broadcasted, um, the more people are exposed to the women's game. Um, I think the more it can grow. Um, and I think just in general, this massive deal, um, if you'd asked me two years ago even, no chance I would have ever expected it. It's just a massive move. We are grateful that finally we are recognised as being valued. And this deal is going to continue to have a positive effect on players' lives, both on and off the pitch. I think it makes a massive, massive difference if you also enjoy your life outside of football. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a person that I try to not allow football to con consume my life or consume me. Um, I, I need that balance and I'm very happy where I'm at. Um, in terms of Leicester as a club and also my life outside of football here. Not all Super Leagues are welcomed by the fans. One causing massive uproar is the newly proposed European Super League. Katie Dealing's with us. Katie, what's the update? We have just had breaking news that the European Super League has been cancelled following the protests from the fans. It was announced that Chelsea was the first to leave the competition with other teams soon to follow. What's your thoughts on the proposed European Super League, Katie? Do you think it will be good for the game? Jay, personally, I think it was a really silly idea putting teams into a league because of their popularity rather than their league status. You've got to take into consideration what about the teams that are doing well this year? Don't they get the opportunity to try and prove themselves in this league? I agree. It all seems to happen so quickly as well. Clubs just leaving the Premier League out of nowhere like that. Although now that the European Super League has been suspended, I'm intrigued to see how club president of Real Madrid, Florentino Perez, comes out with a new proposition. I don't think Perez will take this lightly because apparently he has been working on this league for several years. However, you've got to think about the fans because at the end of the day, these are the heart and soul of football. Absolutely, Katie. No consideration was shown for the fans. And football's for the fans, so I'm glad it's been suspended. Thank you for the report, Casey. Finally, we move away from football and onto something a bit different in the world of sports, wakeboarding. Our correspondent, Michael Day, tested the waters for himself before he sat down with Liam Peacock regarding wakeboarding and how it plans to become an Olympic sport in time for the 2024 Paris Games. Many places and facilities have had to close over the last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And this place is no different. I'm here at the Mitchett Keys Wake and Ski Park and I'm learning all there is to know about wakeboarding. This 
briefly explain what is wakeboarding. So I would, I would usually describe it as like snowboarding, but on water. So you can ski as well, so it's, it's kind of similar. So you're just kind of floating on top of the water and then, yeah. And have you got any tips for me that's never wakeboarded before? Keep your arms straight and your legs bent. Those are like the two most important things, I think. How cold's the lake? Wakeboarding isn't just for complete novices like myself. There is also a pro circuit where players compete in events and perform tricks on the cable to try and win big money. I sat down with 2019 Trick of the Year winner and professional Team GB wakeboarder Liam Peacock to learn more about the sport and the future of wakeboarding. You have like four or five judges and they're basically looking for like your style, like how big you're going on your tricks how clean they are, just like the way your run's put together. So whether you're spinning both ways, flipping both ways, like... It's not an Olympic sport at the moment, is it? Nah, not yet. Quite a niche sport there. But I think also there's a lot of hoo-ha because the Olympics always say that they can't have like, an, uh, like a motorised element or something in it. The cable runs on electricity, so technically it would be okay to go in. So I think we're hoping that in the future we will get in. So it appears it won't be long before wakeboarding becomes an Olympic sport. And maybe, just maybe, we could be seeing a gold medal round Liam's neck at the 2024 Paris Olympics. Michael Day, Sports Social. <sighs> Seems difficult. I know Joe would have fallen off straight away. But seriously, Joe, is there any sports you'd like to see included for the 2024 Olympics? Uh, yeah, there is actually. I know it might seem a little controversial, but I want tug of war back. I think it'd be great. I'm sure you do, Joe. It used to be in the Olympics before, right? That's right, Jay. Uh, in the early 1900s, I think. Not only that, but Great Britain have the most gold medals of anyone during that period. So, bring it back. Personally, I wanted baseball. And thankfully, it's coming back this Summer Olympics in Tokyo. Anyway, that's about it for today's show. Thank you for watching. From me, Jay Rana. And me, Joe McKenzie. Catch us at the same time tomorrow on Sports Social for the best coverage in current sports news stories.